In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This world was created in two parts. The heavens represent the spiritual and supernatural reality. The earth represents the physical, material, and natural reality. Yeshua did not just come to redeem our souls. He came to redeem our souls and our bodies. He did not die so we can just go to heaven. In fact, heaven is just a temporary place we go until the Lord returns and establishes the new heavens and the new earth. Rabbi, Philip said the baptizer gave his followers a prayer in addition to the daily traditional prayers. Perhaps you could do the same. Yes, I'd like to learn more about what you're saying when you're out alone. Now, now you're behaving like true students. This is what I like to see. Prayer is the first step in getting the mind and the heart right. It's why you see me go to it so often. So teach us to pray like you do. Please. When we pray, we want to be sure to first start with acknowledging our Father in heaven and his greatness. So you can say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And we always want to be sure to do God's will and not our own. So we say, what were the disciples asking in Luke 11 when they said to Yeshua, Lord, teach us to pray as Yochanan, John also taught his disciples. Obviously, they had spent a lot of time with him and were familiar with his methods of prayer, and in addition, were knowledgeable in the religious rituals of their day in the synagogue and temple. Therefore, there must be an aspect to the question which is not readily apparent from the gospel account. Understanding the Jewish background to this question is key in discerning its meaning. A rabbi's main responsibility was to teach his disciples how to serve God and to fulfill the mitzvot, the commandments of the Lord. One of the foundational aspects of spiritual service is prayer, tefillah. I am thankful before you, living and enduring King, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. I am thankful before you, living and enduring King, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings sleep to my eyes. The central Jewish prayers are the Shema and the Amidah, which means standing because it is recited daily while standing. The Amidah is also referred to as Hatafilah, the prayer, because it is the main Jewish liturgical prayer. Here is the first blessing of the Amidah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, velohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Chazde Avot, Ume Vigo Eliv Nevenehem, Leman Shemo Biahava, Melek Oze Umashi. Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham. That prayer ends with, You are our Melech, you are King, you are our Helper, you are our Shield. Blessed are you, the Shield of Abraham. So the Amidah prayer is so critical that it was recited three times each day at each one of the main prayer services. I want to share why I think 
Yeshua's prayer directly connects back to the Amidah. We must ask what clues are there in the Gospels and early church history that the two are connected. First, there is the pattern. The Amidah is based on a threefold structure, praise, petition, and thanksgiving. Why? because it is coming into the presence of the king. Whenever you stand before a great person, first you praise them, how great it is to meet you, how wonderful it is to get to know you. And then you begin to petition and make your request known to that individual. And then after they have heard your request, then you say, thank you so much. And so the Amidah prayer, like the Lord's prayer, as we'll see, is a pattern in which we come into the presence of the King. The Lord's Prayer also has the same structure. Praise our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then there is petition. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debt as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then it closes in thanksgiving. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> the Amidah was said three times a day while standing. The Lord's Prayer is also connected to standing in the New Testament. This is what we read in Mark 11:25. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your transgression. So Mark says, when you stand, pray. And Acts 2:42 says, they were continuing steadfastly in the teaching of the apostles and fellowship and the breaking of the bread and the prayers, the prayers. It's talking about something very specific by using the definite article, the. Remember, the Amidah is referred to as ha tefillah, the prayer. I believe that this use in the book of Acts of the definite article is in all probability linking back and connecting to the Amidah prayer. Ancient Christian tradition taught that the Lord's Prayer should be recited three times a day while standing, just like the Amidah. There is not a requirement today for Christians to pray the Amidah or the Lord's Prayer three times a day, but both can be a helpful and meaningful tool in our prayer life. The most important thing to remember is that prayer is extremely powerful. Someone once said, the only power God yields to is the power of prayer. Wow. <laughs> prayer has the power to make the impossible possible because it moves the heart of God. Sons of thunder. Aren't you supposed to still be fishing? We decided they could handle it. We wanted to learn more about what you were planning. Hmm. You won a contest, huh? <laughs> How is Andrew? Eh, we'll get over it. <laughs> so, uh, what have we missed? Z is working on a security plan. Mary and Rama are back at camp working Thank on... Thank you, Matthew. They don't need to hear all the details. One of the things I love about The Chosen is how it portrays Jesus in such a relatable and down-to-earth way. His sense of humor, for example, and his exhaustion from ministry demonstrate the humanity of Jesus is just as important as his divinity. Think about it for a moment. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This world was created in two parts. The heavens represent the spiritual and supernatural reality. The earth represents the physical, material, and natural reality. Yeshua did not just come to redeem our souls, he came to redeem our souls and our bodies. He did not die so we can just go to heaven. In fact, heaven 
is just a temporary place we go until the Lord returns and establishes the new heavens and the new earth. Jesus was and always will be the only 200% person that ever lived, 100% man and 100% God. Even when he was resurrected from the dead, it was a physical bodily resurrection, not just a spiritual one. He still had the holes in his hands from the nails he ate with his disciples. And when he returns, he will give us resurrection bodies that will be a perfect blend of the spiritual and the physical. Perfect harmony and balance. I know I'm looking forward to that six pack in heaven. <laughs> it's for this reason we must care for our body as well as our soul. We must minister to both people's spiritual, emotional, and relational needs if we want to love and serve people like Yeshua, Jesus. But there's even more. The incarnation is one of the greatest and most marvelous mysteries ever. The Creator stepped out of heaven and became part of His creation. The King of creation had become subject to the work of his hands. Yeshua's incarnation is about identification. He knows what it's like to be human, to be tested and tempted, and can identify with our wants, and he wants to help you. Hebrews 4 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God cares about you, and he feels your pain. God identifies with us in our weakness, shame, and pain. People tend to think that the greatest sacrifice Yeshua Jesus made was his death on the cross. But the incarnation was and is just as great. The Lord left heaven and came in bodily form. He felt hunger, rejection, abandonment. He suffered physically and emotionally. He was tempted and tested. We tend to think that these things were easier for him because he was God in the flesh. But the truth is that Yeshua was without sin. He was not tainted by the fall. This meant that he could feel and experience on a much, much deeper level. So all the things he went through were greatly amplified. His rejection, his hunger, and his physical pain was more than we could ever imagine or experience ourselves. Think about it. The cross lasted for several hours, but the incarnation lasts forever. This is how much God loves you, by God becoming a man and identifying with our humanity. When you're going through tough times, remember that He does not ask you to go through anything that he was not willing to experience himself. As he identified with us, we need to identify with him by identifying with other people's pain and suffering so that we might show them the love of Messiah Yeshua. It's the why of this sermon. It's not because we need to make our presence felt here in the region. And it's not about the details of how we make this happen. The details matter, yes. And all of you will make sure that this is executed well. But what makes this sermon so important is each person who will be there. Philip, what makes John's sermon so memorable? The volume. <laughs> well, yes, that too. He spoke directly to whoever was there. It was personal. Yes, good. But this sermon will have thousands of people. So I won't be directing it to one group of people over another. But what I will say will be for each and every one of them. 
They are coming because word is spreading from the signs and wonders, but what I'll be giving to them will be far more important. Truth. This will define our whole ministry. And that's what we need to focus on. The Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' messianic understanding of the Torah, the five books of Moses. Many of the 613 commandments in the Torah are referenced in this season of The Chosen. According to rabbinic tradition, there are 613 commandments in the Torah. These 613 are divided into two sets, 248 positive commandments or precepts. These correspond to the 248 total organs and limbs in the human body and 365 negative commandments, which correspond to the 365 sinews in our bodies, as well as the 365 days of the year. The 613 commandments are meant to remind us that we are to serve God with all our 248 limbs and organs through keeping the 248 positive commandments as well as our 365 sinews through the observing of the 365 negative commandments all 365 days of the year. Wow. <laughs> We're called to serve God with our entire being. What is interesting is that the numerical value of Torah is 611 and not 613 as one would expect. It says this in the Torah, Torah Sivalanu Moshe, Moses commanded the Torah to Israel. This is understood to mean that Moses gave 611 commandments, but there's 613. What happened to the other two? They were not commanded through Moses, but by the voice of God himself. At Sinai, the people heard God directly speak the first two of the Ten Commandments, but became so afraid that they asked God to stop speaking to them directly. They feared that they might die if God continued to speak all His commandments to them. But I believe there is something more to this. I believe the fact that the Torah adds up to 611 and not 613 points to the fact that there is actually something more. You could say something missing. The two missing commandments prophetically allude to Messiah Yeshua's message. Is it a coincidence that he summarized the Torah through two great commandments? To love the Lord your God, the Ahafta et Adonai el Hecha, and to love your neighbor as yourself, the Ahafta Reacha Kamocha? What was missing was the fullness of the love that Yeshua taught and embodied. These two love commandments actually summarize the first and second tablet that God gave through Moses at Mount Sinai, right? It's amazing because the greatest demonstration of love was his death on the cross. There are two parts to the actual physical cross. There is the vertical stake and the horizontal cross beam, which Yeshua himself carried. The vertical part of the cross represents love, love the Lord your God. The horizontal represents love your neighbor, Yeshua died at the intersection of love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't that amazing? The cross embodies the fullness of love. He models what keeping God's Torah and commandments truly means. It's love. The apostle and rabbi Paul underscores this when he writes about love in several places. Galatians 5 says this, For in Messiah Yeshua, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any meaning, but only trust and faithfulness expressing itself through love. And for the whole Torah can be summed up in a single saying, love your neighbor as yourself and bear one another's burdens 
And in this way, you fulfill the Torah of Messiah, Galatians 6.2. But there's more as it is written. There is no fear in love, but perfect love dries out fear. For fear has nothing to do with punishment. And the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John 4.18. We do not need to fear like Israel did at Sinai. God's love removes fear and even perfects us. Love is key to overcoming fear. Loving God as well as loving your neighbor is the key to overcoming the anxieties and the fears we wrestle with in life. When we know the love of God, it perfects us and fear is removed. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.